Welcome back, everybody. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. I don't get it at all. You don't get it? No. We're going to be bagging up beans. Yes, but I don't get that beans, you... beans, magical fruit. Magical musical, music? musical fruit. Yeah. I don't understand. You don't know why I did that, or you don't know the saying? I don't know the saying. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot, the more you toot, the better the field. So let's have beans for every meal. You're a guy. You're such a guy. And that's all on film. <laughs> yes, I know. You're such a guy. Okay. Okay, would you like a different intro to that? No, that's fine. You know I'm going to keep this in, right? <laughs> Probably so. Welcome back to the Renewed Homestead, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm Denise. And today we're trying something new and we're bringing you along as we try to do. In our preparations and getting things set up, we had the opportunity to buy some dried beans. And it's not just a bag of beans. It's a bag of beans. We have 100 pounds of beans that we need to store. And we also have a mouse problem. So this is twofold. We're going to be, uh, we've got our Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, five gallon buckets, lids, markers. So we're going to show you what we're going to walk through this. I'm basically loading these up and sealing them up. Um, the Mylar is supposed to protect, protect anything you put in it, but food particularly long term uh, from light and air. So hopefully things won't spoil and they'll last longer. Five gallon buckets will help keep the mice out. And but the, it, yeah, and the oxygen absorbers will help with the air as well. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, the buckets will also help us store these things because they can stack. Whereas these bags, you know, easily access, accessed, <laughs> easy for the mice to get into them. Yeah. And uh, these don't stack up very well either. You can but, see the black beans. Yeah, these are supposed to be a higher quality beans. So like. Yeah, there's restaurant quality, grocery store quality, and these are supposed to be even better than that. So we have not tried any. In fact, we just now opened the bag. There's a beautiful bag of beans, though, and that will last us a while, especially since we got Mom and Jack hopefully moving up here soon. Um, yeah, and help us. it's a rainy day, rainy, rainy, yes. wet day on the homestead, which is great because North Carolina has been in a drought, so we have desperately needed this rain. But it, it has kind of forced us to do some of the indoor chores, and this is definitely one of those indoor chores that we've got to get done. Definitely, because these this bag's been sitting here for what, about a month now, and every day I come out and worry about those mice. And yes, I'm setting up new uh, uh, a new mouse trap. And I'm watching a hawk fly over up there. Um, but we will turn you around and the, the fog is just rolling up over the mountain. So definitely a good, a good indoor day to do these kind of things. And, yes. And uh, so let's grab a bag here and let's, let's get doing this. And we do also have some rice that we're going to be putting in. Not in the same bag, of course. Now, one thing to... Just going to get back in camera view. One thing to keep in mind is brown rice, uh, just like dog food. We talked about this in other videos, but it does not store well because of the oils. So you want to be careful about brown rice or dog food, right. unless it's canned dog food. Right, yes. right. It's good to have extra and absolutely do that. Just make sure you're rotating it and not getting so far ahead that it's going to spoil. Yes. My lar bag. Care to scoop? Sure. Or would you like me to put it on the table for you to scoop? No, this is fine. Okay. And 
we were told at, when you're doing this, because what we're going to do is fold that mylar over and iron it to seal it. We don't want to fill it above basically the bottom rim of the, the, uh, the bucket where the handle is, because otherwise you can't fold it over well enough and get a good seal. And the seal is the most critical part of this whole process, really. Yes, I'm short. <laughs> no, it's not that she's short. It just makes me look like I'm six foot three, which I am far from that. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my mom who's about this tall. directionally and spatially challenged. Hey now. <laughs> it's not a criticism, it's part of your charm. Yes. I think one more scoop there. All right, let's see where we're at. I think we're good. You don't want to overfill it. No, no, exactly. All right. Oh. Loki's going to test out the beans for us, so. All right, let's hit that with an oxygen, oxygen absorber. Oh, the iron's beeping at us, I'm wanting to shut up. All right, now, true confession, we did do one of these practice beforehand. A couple of modifications, made some tools so that we can, and what we're gonna do here, you wanna record this with your phone too? Sure. Just be careful when this, the mic will pick up all the little stuff, so. Oh, yes. Okay, so we're gonna take the Mylar bag and fold it over, and we're gonna iron about three quarters of it, but leave the end open so we can squeeze the rest of that air out. So, like I said, we cut a little short piece of plywood so we have a surface to iron on. It's our bean bucket ironing board. and sealed. So now we just have the end bucket uh, end open. Fold that side down and we made tool number two because this will fit down in the bucket. Fold that over. Now I think the I think the only tricky part to this is not hitting the iron against the plastic bucket. And as I did that, I was pushing down to squeeze the air out. Squeeze the air out of that. It could be tighter. I mean, we could probably suck more air out. We could use, we have a vacuum sealer. We could probably try to pull more of the air out. From what I understand, this is sufficient. And with that oxygen and absorber in there, we should be okay, so. And done. Rinse, lather, repeat. And this product is not endorsed nor encouraged by Lowe's, who is on the name of the buckets. <laughs> yes, just buckets we, we purchased. Yes. <laughs> but this can be a really great way for you to preserve some of the food that you have, especially if you have mice or any other issues. Uh, just really simple bucket, uh, mylar bags, and iron, and oxygen absorbers, and you've got a really great way to preserve some food. Yeah, and I this will last years. Yeah, I would, yeah, the, the Mylar bags, from what I understand, will preserve food for like 25 years, as long as it stays dry, mm -hmm. and well dried and not oily, like you said, dog food or, or brown rice. Brown rice. There was one other thing they mentioned that was... 
I can't think of it right off the top of my head. I know yeah. brown rice for sure. Yeah, and maybe it was dog food because we were talking about those two things. Yeah, but white but, rice is okay. It's just the brown rice because it's got those oils. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking as far as investment. I mean, we already had an iron. The buckets with the lid, $5. The bags are probably, I don't know, less than a dollar a piece. And the oxygen absorbers, I mean, what, less than $7 to preserve food for a long period? Yes. It so just, it, it makes sense, yeah. And we we really wanted to do this. Um, as you know, we, we believe in being prepared. We believe in preparedness. Um, it's one of the reasons we're on a homestead. Uh, but with everything going on in the world, uh, we've got supply chain issues. We have, um, you know, the prices of groceries that continue to go up. They're stating that the it's going to continue to go up. And then you look at, uh, you know, not only the consumer price index that has risen, but the uh, producer price index also rose. So now we know that next year we're going to see even higher prices on groceries. So it's just a really good time um, to just, and we've got stores of food, but we want to make sure we have even more, especially as families moving up here soon. Yeah. Uh, but we would just encourage y'all, um, you know, get some food stores available if you don't have any, just in case. And it's not just as we've talked about for, you know, like nuclear war or anything, which I know right. some people do prepare for. Yeah, but good for them. Good for them. But for us, it's more about, uh, you know, uh, helping with higher food costs, but also life events, right? You never know if somebody is going to lose their job or somebody is going to get sick. Yep. Um, you never know if something's going to happen to the economy, natural disasters. I mean, we just saw what happened in Kentucky um, and throughout the Midwest with the, the tornadoes, tornadoes in yeah. the Midwest. We had the hurricane um, that is not being talked about anymore for some reason, but we know that they're still in Louisiana. They're still reeling from that hurricane. That hurricane? went through Tornado. Hurricane Ida. No, oh, Hurricane yeah, Ida. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so it's just a good idea to have some stores just in case because you never know what's going to happen. And then this way, if something does happen, you're not worried about spending money at the grocery store. You can go to your own pantry where you already have food to pull out the food. And you never know, uh, you know, if somebody might be in need that you know. This is also a great way if you have extra, you can bless others with the extra that you have. Yep. And, and, you know, we're not saying go out and spend your whole paycheck at the grocery store buying beans and rice. And as we said before, get, get, get stuff to spice up, get stuff you're going to eat. But I mean, literally this, this bag of rice is only a buck. Now in talking about pre preserving, it's not going to stay long in the plastic. This, if you're going to do it this way and you don't have a means of, of uh, preserving it, you know, Think about a lot of some of the things that you might order might come in type in like a mylar type bag. Some I've had things in the past, and that's actually how I would preserve some of my seeds that I would save. Put them in, wrap them in paper towels, roll, fold them up in in the mylar bags, and then stick them in the freezer. It'll last longer. Now, if your power goes out, there's a whole another issue. But yes. But anyway, just you know, take a cup, buy a couple extra bags of this and that, and some. And that know, one we can't. The, the, the this this one. this one's brown rice. Yes. Yep. So. I I thought this was another bag of white rice. So this is definitely going to go in the freezer now, mm -hmm. and we will be using this sooner rather than later. Yes. As we stated earlier. So. Yeah. Well, do we want to talk about preparedness a little bit more? If you oh. want to. Something that was brought up and uh, a concern, and in, in, in the prepper mind, prepper mentality, people. You know, you've you've got. Bags of water, or bags of water. Cases of Cases water. of water, water filtration, you know, you can use the water out of your, the tank of your toilet, out of your water heater and things like that. But what people, I think are, one, one of the key things that people are missing is that if the power goes out, you're not gonna have water. And that's, that's gonna be a problem real fast, especially for folks that are in uh, apartment complexes and things like that, because your toilets aren't going to flush. And if you're in an apartment, you don't have a backyard to go out and water a tree or dig a hole. So what do you do? Back in, in Phoenix, you know, we had a yard and all that, but in the same time, we wanted to be prepared. They sell toilet seats that fit five gallon buckets. I know it sounds weird. It's just plastic. They sell them at Walmart. They're, I don't know, probably 10, 15 bucks, something like that. They're not that expensive, but if your toilet's not flushing, sanitation is going to become a critical issue very, very, very fast. So, you know, you might want to invest in something like that in a five-gallon bucket. Then you've got all these bags that you've got from the grocery store you can use inside the bucket, tie up what you need to dispose of, 
and at least you've got it contained because without that you can use your imagination where you're going to be going to the toilet when it's not flushing anymore. So well, and like you talked about with the water, uh, without electricity, and like we're we're working on things like we have the ponds, we have cisterns. Uh, that was one of the most important things for us on a property was making sure we had plenty of water. But we have a well, and that well is on you know runs off of electricity. So if our power goes out, we don't have access to the well. So we are we're put, going to be putting in a solar pump, but we do have access to other water sources in case that does happen. Right. Um, but if you're in an apartment, if you're in the city in a home, uh, your water's not going to work because everything runs off of power if there's a, a massive power outage. Um, so what you can do, and I know Ben has told our kids to do this, fill the bathtub. If something's yeah, if coming, fill the bathtub. Um, with water, just so you have some water available. Um, yep. And obviously you want to stock up and store water. Right. Um, but if but, something's coming or you're yep. worried about something, fill your water um, as fast as you can. At least you'll have gallons yeah. of water yeah. in if, your bathtub. If right? you have warning. I mean, rolling blackouts, you don't have any warning. No. But if, but if, sometimes if, a black, sometimes the power can go out and you can still have access to water. Right. We're talking about like catastrophic power failures. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If your gut says something's up, yeah, fill, fill the bathtub. And you know what? I mean, fill your trash cans. Anything that won't leak, fill them up, set them, you know, this would slide behind the toilet just to have that extra water. I mean, yeah, and, I, and I know. Yeah, filter it. You'll, you'll need to filter it with like a Berkey filter or something. Right, right. Lines. But yes. you've got water. I mean, it's, you know, I know some people are going, wow, these guys are getting, getting close to that deep end. But, you know, we just, we care about you. We look at and see what's going on. We know what our our preparations are and we want to share what we were doing before we got out to the property so yeah and we might not ever hit that level oh let's please 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 no. yes but our motto is it is better to be prepared for something because then if it does happen we're not caught by surprise yeah. we're able to work through it and like i said i mean sometimes a natural disaster like what happened in kentucky yeah. they don't have water they don't have power and uh so the, and even the houses that did not get hit even in the towns over that didn't get hit they are without power they are without water yep. so it's not just the houses that get hit it's the surrounding communities um so like i said we're not trying to be you know like we're you not, know put we're a not, tinfoil we're, hat on or anything <laughs> but you know but think of it this way um we, we've always prepared. Ben's always been more on the prepared side. Um, and I've kind of come along and, and understood that. Careful, honey. I know the mic's going to pick up a lot. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, but, but before COVID hit, right, how many people looked at people that were preparing and was like, oh my gosh, you're crazy, the tinfoil hat. And then COVID hit and everybody's like, oh, okay, well now I, I, I understand a little bit more, right? So so just kind of think of that. We just want to make sure that you have some options just in case something happens. Yep, exactly. So. <laughs> First right. the musical beans and now a tinfoil hat. You know, it's a rainy day and I've, I've had two coffees. <laughs> Plus a donut. Had a donut. Interesting yeah. donut. It's actually Fri really good. Fried in duck fat. Yeah, it was really good. Never had that before. Billy recommended whole donuts in Asheville, and we were going through. We picked up a really cool antique cast iron tub that we've been yeah. searching for. Um, claw foot tub. Claw She's foot got tub, yes. her tub now. Got my tub now. We have to... Uh, needs a little bit of needs work. Needs a little bit of work on the inside, but the outside looks really good. It's really solid, but we were going outside of Asheville to pick that up, so we came through and... and Went to Whole Donuts and got the donuts. They're yeah. pretty good. I don't. I don't know if I would compare them to Hertz Donuts, but they are pretty darn good. They are. They are. And we hear during apple season, they actually will take each day. They have like three different um, tree ripe apples, and you pick which one. They'll cut it up right there, fold it into the dough. Yeah. Then they then they cook it. So it's almost like a hot apple pie. Granny Smith. We will be back for that. I know. For I'm sure. a Granny Smith girl. You're not. I no, know. Honey Crisp for me. The Honey Crisp. Actually, what's the Pink Lady? No. Uh, you know, that, that, oh, not a gala. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. We've got lots of apples here, though. Yeah, he, we have, how many? He got seven. Seven, right? Mm -hmm. No, no. Did you buy seven or eight that first time that you ordered? Oh, the first order? First order was seven or eight, right? Seven, I think, because we used one as a pollinator. Yes, okay. I guess, because you got but we got, apple. But we got the kind that she liked, too. But then, yes, yeah, so we have seven, me. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve apple trees now? I think so. Brayburn. It's my apple. Yeah, 12, 12 apple trees now. I've got five cherry trees. Yes. You have 12 apple trees. And I've got six peach trees. <laughs> G 
Cherries are my favorite. Yes. So. so. Okay. Um, let's see. And on the clawfoot tub, thanks to our wonderful neighbor, Travis. Yes. He's got a big pickup truck. Mine's got a little bit of an issue, and I didn't really want to drive it. It's an hour and a half drive, but he went with us, helped me pick it up, about 500 pounds-ish. So big thanks to him. Yes. So, anything else? Not that I can All think right. Of. Well, let's, let's do some more musical fruit bagging up. <laughs> and then we're going to go put insulation in the house because it's going to rain the rest of the day. Yeah. So, All right. Well, uh, as always, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Check and make sure you're still subscribed. I know that algorithm yes. is kicking people out left and right. So you might think you're getting getting notifications and you might not be. But yes. anyway, so get your pay, pets spayed and neutered. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless. We will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.